Hello. So I'm going to hang out here for a little bit while people log in. I hope you're having a wonderful evening wherever you are, or maybe it's morning where you're at. Thank you so much for joining. I hope everybody's been well. Can you hear me okay? Everybody can hear me okay? Um, if you can, let me know. あ、今日はインスタグラムライブに来ていただきありがとうございます。えっと、大体インスタグラムライブは英語でしてるんですが、もし質問があったらぜひ日本語で下の方に書いてください。um, if you're joining, I usually do my Instagram live. Okay, good. Hello. Thanks for joining. Um, if you are joining for your first time today, welcome. And if you've been to Instagram live with me before, good to see you again. So I usually do my Instagram lives in English, but if you are a Japanese speaker and you would like to ask your question in Japanese, feel free to fill it out underneath. So usually the way that I like to Instagram live is we have questions that people have sent in where I have my laptop here so I look over here um, and I'll answer questions. If you have any questions while it's Instagram live and you want to ask, you can put it down right there. Ah, konnichiwa, Shirai-san! Hisashiburi desu! あの、インスタグラムライブは普段は英語でさせていただいて、それで今日初めて来られる方がいましたら、あの、ぜひ質問がありましたら下に書いていただければお答えさせていただきますし、またはえ、前に質問をメールとかえ、ソーシャルメディ
the significance, the importance, etc. Okay, so thank you so much for writing, Anya. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to send in your question. Um, okay, so I think that I'm not, to be honest, I'm not super versed in spirit animals. I've studied a little bit about it. Um, I use a lot in meditation and also in visualizations. Um, and of course, they come through when I do energy readings. Um, those of you who are interested in what energy reading is that I do, um, Hi, Kimmy. Oh my gosh, good to see you. Um, I'll explain a little bit during the session, but if you're interested, you can find out more about uh, energy readings on the website. So um, check it out if you're interested. So with um, spirit animals, with spirit animals, um, I, it depends on, I think, the way that you might be approaching it. Uh, some people are very much in tune with the animal kingdom, which includes insects, animals, um, and uh, living organisms and, and things like that. So uh, it's, it's not um, necessarily the same for everybody, and I think it depends also on which school of thought. I know that there is various um, teachers and those who have channeled spirit animals who might have varying degrees of um, thought on it, which is fine. But from what my own personal experience has been with spirit animals is that if you find that there is a particular animal or insect or being that continues to reappear in your life, um, it would be worthwhile to check it out and what that means. It also is important to see how the spirit animal is entering into your life and sometimes spirit animals could be separated into one that is bringing a message to you and one that is a constant in your life, meaning that that can be um, a symbol of what your being is connecting to. So for example, um, I feel that my spirit animal um, on for the base has been a butterfly and it's been for a really long time. Um, and it's through, uh, it's more almost like a, um, a, a knowing when you hit it. It's, it's not something that I was like searching for, but someone who was very versed in spirit animals, one time we were hiking, this is a long time ago, um, and uh, an incident happened and they have pointed out that you know maybe your your spirit animal is a butterfly and it's the first time that I had heard about that so I had studied and looked into it and so I feel that as a core base I feel that that is the uh, spirit animal that I connect to yes um, and I'll talk a little bit about how you can maybe find your spirit animal uh, and the the other type is spirit animals that bring messages to you so for example when I do meditation work specifically or more um, dream uh, analyzation when certain animals appear um, and it continues to appear and reappear in these moments I'll write them down and I'll write down how they're connecting to that certain time in my life or certain situation if it's a dream then a certain scenario how they entered into it and uh, I'll take note of it and then I'll look up the animal um, on various in various degrees um, as a messenger um, as a as a symbol as a um, what's the other one that I look for symbol meaning um, and mm, I have to remember the third one. But anyway, so I looked them up and then I try to, it's more of an intuitive, uh, by this point, it's a very intuitive process. So you want to look at how that is uh, being implied into your life and try to figure out how the spirit animal is trying to get through to you. Um, so again, I don't think that there's a right or wrong way to approach spirit animals. I think that it's a matter of listening to your inner guide um, and seeing what is connecting to your your um, in, you know intuitive self. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, so you might want to check it out. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Uh, don't don't just look at the actual animal itself but again kind of like what Kimmy said is that um, you want to look at color. You want to look at type because because of that. Uh, those different versions they actually mean different things and so you want to you want to maybe check it out um, so hopefully that answered your question oh so the way that you if you're interested in finding your spirit animal base what you can do is um, one is most of the time I tell people you know they'll just appear when they're ready to appear and you'll know when when that time comes um, good oh I'm glad um, and you, it's just kind of a knowing or if you were to think back to your childhood there might be a particular animal that uh, continue to be in your life that you really love like let's say your, your parents gave you a stuffed a stuffed lion and it was the 
stuffed animal that you love holding and the lion continues to reappear in your life and you feel very connected to it um, and you, it might be worthwhile looking into it. As an adult, if you feel that it's of interest to you and you want to find out maybe more about what your spirit animal may be, um, what you can do is uh, do some dream analysis. And what that is, is um, before you go to sleep, you want to write down um, the question of, you know, please connect me to this, my spirit animal or what is my spirit animal or I think my spirit animal is blank. Is this true? Uh, and so you just write it down in a notebook and you leave it or it could be a piece of paper Anything is fine. You write it before right before you go to sleep And so it's setting that intention in your subconscious and you go to bed and uh, Sometimes within your dream state Because you're allowing your subconscious to come through and the subconscious is connected to your higher self and all these other things So it's almost like you're allowing the answers to come to you by posing the question in your conscious mind so when you wake up in the morning, if you remember anything about maybe an animal that appeared or it doesn't have to be actually by memory, it could be more of an intuitive process where you wake up in the morning. If you don't remember anything, you ask yourself, did my spirit animal appear in my dream? And if something comes to you immediately without thinking about it, but you're just like it hits you, then you're like, OK, and you write it and you try doing this for three nights in a row. Um, sometimes it takes a little while for other people, and um, that's okay. Not everybody it work not you know it doesn't work the same for everybody. So what you want to try to do is um, repeat the process, and it's important to have uh, the same question asked. So you don't want to change up your question per night. It's like ask the same question. Um, I don't. I don't. You know what? Honestly, Ro, I feel that. Your spirit animal, your base spirit animal can actually change throughout your life. And I wouldn't be surprised if some people have more than one, but I would say most people, it is one, one dominating spirit animal. Maybe that's the easy way of saying it, that there's one dominant spirit animal and there could be maybe some sub animals that are, you know, um, connected or supportive of that one. Um, but, you know, again, anything is possible. I think that, um, you know, there's very different types of people and their composition and so um, again I wouldn't be surprised if some people had a hybrid of two or even um, I've heard of people who have spirit animals of those that are not even um, you know animals that don't exist in our, our current world but might have exist um, in a previous world or a previous version um, so definitely keep your eyes and ears open for those who are interested um, and kind of explore and see what comes up Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much, Anya, for writing. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, okay, so, oh, good, interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going if no one has any questions for me. Um, so the next question is mm, anonymous. So if you have any questions that you send to me through email and you don't want me to announce your name, that's perfectly fine. Just write anonymous and I can answer your question and you'll know it's yours without me having to say your name. So, okay, so he or she writes, you recommend or are currently reading the book Holistic Tarot, an integrative approach to using tarot for personal growth by Benabel Wen. I'd be curious to know if and how you practice the tarot, for how long you've been interested in it, and when you get out of it, or what you get out of it for yourself and your life. Um, oh, thank you. I'm going to pin that right now. Okay, so here's the question. Okay, so um, I don't know if it's still up on the website, but for those who might be interested in books that I'm currently reading, I do have a reading current book reading list on the website. If you go to the site, satsukishibuya.com, scroll to the bottom. Thank you for the hearts, by the way. Really appreciate it. Um, if you scroll to the bottom, if you go to FAQ, you'll see, I think it's number five on the list, but I usually update that list with books that I'm currently reading. And this was one that I had been reading for a while. Um, and so she was asking about this. So um, to answer your question, I don't use tarot in my practice um, per se, like for example, energy reading, I don't use tarot. Uh, it's a 
it's a subject that I'm curious about, and I have been studying a little bit about it. Um, but you know, in no way would I say that I'm versed at all. It's it's definitely more of a um, an exploration. And the reason why is because I. I'm always finding ways of viewing the world in different perspectives, and I believe that there's a lot of things that are unseen in the world in our in our visual naked eye, um, and so if there's a way to understand or connect it um, on different realms, then oh, thank you so much for joining. Um, okay, thank you, Ro. It's good to see you. Uh, so I do look at the tarot in on, um, in a way of integrating into my own practice whether it's my art practice or my spiritual practice um, it's just something that i would like to gain knowledge about um, while while it continues to inform other things that i'm doing um, so far i i believe that it's helped me to understand um, how do i describe it it helps me to see things in a larger picture a lot of times when I look at the tarot and it's definitely not the sale like for example when I do energy readings I tell people that come in as my clients that you know whatever I read for them should not be the end all deal at all they should definitely look at other things that interest them that are calling out to them whether it's getting a reading from some other person or if you're exploring other ways of understanding yourself whether it's tarot or horoscopes or numerology or whatever your interest is in to check them out because there's always many many layers to our being and there's so many ways of interpreting it and I think that we as beings are able to see a full picture if we look into all these different modalities and so um, for me tarot was calling out to me I was interested in finding out more about what the practice is about um, how people use that as a way of understanding themselves and the world um, oh, okay um, um, okay so we have a Japanese question I'll be answering that in a second so I think that when um, when you're able to incorporate other things into your everyday life, it doesn't even have to be for work, but if there's something that you're interested in, keep an open mind um, and see where it takes you. There is always a reason why there's something calling out to you and there's always a reason why it's of interest to you. Um, and so I think it's worthwhile to take a look at it, see what it is that is about it. It could actually not even be that thing, but it could be the gateway to the other thing, something else, whatever it is. So um, I highly recommend um, taking a look at what is calling out to you. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much for writing in. Okay, so I'm gonna ask answer this question. Um, bear with me as I look through it, and it's gonna be in Japanese. So please don't mind me while I'm answering this question. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to be, it's in Japanese, so I'm going to be making sure that I'm reading it correctly here. Um, okay, so let's see. English, English. Okay. Uh, okay, so the Japanese question is uh, Okay, so um, I'm going to answer this in question in Japanese. Uh, uh, Japanese.、えー、あの、時期っていうのはあのその私たちが知ってるカレンダーの時期っていうかこう日付っていうよりかはえその家に暮らしているあのオッケーイエスアンサーイングリッシュトゥシュアムじそのえっと暮らしている方のえそうですねリズムっていう
、えー、人生リズムと自分の人生リズムを1回照らし合うのがあの必要だと思うんですねでそれはどういうふうにするかっていうとその例えばじゃあ,、まあえー、とおじい様が買われたとしますねその土地をでその土地の、えー、買われた時時期彼,に彼か、まあまあ、もしおじいさんでしたら彼が買った都市とその都市にその人にはどういうことが起きたかを見てみるんですねでその方がそのお家土地と家を建てられた時からもしそのあの亡くなられたんでしたらその間の、えっと、その人のこう人生のうんどういうんですかねポイントポイントを書いていくんですね一応。で例えば、まあ、あのやり方したら紙一枚にその線を引いてそれ引いていただいてそれでその方が買われた年と、えーまあ、何,何年何月まででいいんですけどでそれでその家に住んでた間に、えー、人生で起きたターニングポイントとか大きなことをポイントに書いていくんですね。例えば、えー、とうーん仕事であの出世されたりとか、まあ、もし子供が生まれたら子供が生まれたとかいろいろ書いていくんですねでそれであの一,一応それを書いていただいた今度下に、えー、っとそのお家に住まれてる方の人生のラインを書いていくんですねそれで例えばじゃあこのおじい様が、えー、っと30歳の時に土地を買ってお家をまあ31で建てられたとしますねそしたら自分もその31と30の時に何ををしていたかをそこかそこらスタートすするんですねスタートポイントで自分たちもそのお家に何歳の時に、えー、と住,住み始めたかもし自分のおじい様でそこに生まれ育ったんでしたら0歳なんですけどもしまあ誰かが結婚されて来られたんでしたらその方のスタートの日にちあの年と、えー、月を書くんです。でそれで自分もそのポイントを書いていくんです今までの人生の中で、えー、ターニングポイントがありましたらそ,のそこに点を打っていくんですねで皆さんのそれを書き終わったら1枚に書き終わったら「Um sure I'll be sure to answer your question thank you for writing」あのー、そこで、えー、と自分の人生とその先祖の人生のポイントをにあ、えー、とどうですか一致するところがありましたら丸していくんです例えば、えー、じゃあ、まあ、子供が生まれた時とかとしますねもしかしてではそのおじい様が子供を生まれた年丸で自分の人生の中で子供が生まれた年を丸でもし子供さんが住んでいましたら子供さんが生まれた年を丸していくんですでその中でリズムを見ていくんですねそのお互いのでえっ、ー、と生ま,れ生まれ育った時とかその時の起きてることは違うかもしれないんですけど人間っていうのは大体こうターニングポイントっていうのは似てるような時に特に自分の先祖でしたらあるんですねでその中でえっ、ー、と先祖様が一番喜びを感じていた時期があるんですねもしくはご先祖さんがうんとそうですねこうありがたいって思っている出来事が起きている時の時期とかいろいろそういう,こう大きな出来事がある時期があるんですその時に、えー、と何歳だったかもしくはいな何月でしたかとかもし日にちが分かれば日にちまで分かったらすごくいいんですけどそれが、えー、と自分の、えー、生きている今現在生き,生きられてる年とそ,れその方が何歳だったかを見るんですねもし自分が今生きてる年より越されてた年でしたらその時期っていうのがいい時期であってその時に先祖供養とかされたら結構答えが出てくるんですねその,その時にお家を例えば、まあ、あの売りたいんですけど、えー、とご先祖さんいいですかとか、まあ、一,一つお伺いっていうか、えー、お願いをするんですねもしその時時期期が自分が例えば63歳まで生きてるとしますねでその先祖さんが52歳で亡くなられてるとしますでそのご先祖さんが生きていた、えー、いいことが起きていた時期がもっと前としますね42とかですね例えばであなたが今まあ60何歳としたらそしたらそういう時はどういうふうにするかというと先祖供養を最初にしてでその先祖供養している時に、えー、とご先祖さんの42歳の時のえっ、ー、と生きられていたあの、まあ、例えば写真でもいいですし自分の中で記憶に残っていれば記憶的にその方のことを思い出すんですねでそれで先祖供養されている時にお話,お話っていうか、まあ、お願いするんですねその,、えー、とその42歳の時の先祖さんに聞くんですあの実はそのお家を
、えー、と売りたい土地を売りたいで、あのー、その先祖さん的にはどうですか私たちはこの家を売ってもいいんですかもしいいんでしたら時期的にいくつですかとか聞かれたら、えー、と不思議と。答えが出てきたりすするんですねでそれはどういうふうにどういう形で出てくるかというと、まあ、夢に出てくるのが多いんですけど例えば、えー、とカレンダーがあ<笑>よかったですあのカレンダーが、えー、と突然、まあ、もし日めくりカレンダーとしますねそしたら突然16日が降りたり落ちてきたりとかもしくは何か本を読んでて何かの日にちが出てきて自分の中ではハッと思ったりとか。あのそういう出来事が起きたりするんですけどもしそういうのがありましたらぜひメモをしていただいてでもう一回、えっと、ご先祖さんに聞くんですでそれはまあ先祖供養じゃなくても、えっと、もしくはお墓参りとか、えっと、お盆とかいろいろあるんですけどその時にまた聞くんですその、えっと、この日が私の中では感じ取ったんですけどそうですかとであの2回もしくは3回同じ日にちあの月が違っても日にちでもいいしもしくは月かもしれないですけど同じのが3回出ましたら、えー、とその日っていうことなんですけどもし違う日にちがバラバラに出てくんでしたらもう一度あのお話をされるのが必要なんですでなぜそこまでするかというとやっぱり代々つながってきた土地とかもしくはご先祖さんから受け取った土地でありましたら。やっぱり相手の気持ちそれはその方がこの世にいなくてもやっぱり相手の思いとかがあのやっぱり積もってる土地なのであの向こうと自分の魂が照らし合ってつながっている状態でやっぱりあの OK をいただくのが一番、えーとまあ、間違いないやり方なんですでちょっと時間はかかると思うんですけどやっぱりそれぐらいの時間を使ってやることにより、えー、家族もみんな。あのすごくこうクリアな気持ちで引っ越し、まあ、その土地を売ることもできますし自分もまたそのご先祖さんとやっぱりこの先もつながっていってるのでえご先祖さんのつながりがえいい形でえつながっていくと思うのでえ一度試してください。<笑>ありがとうございます質問。Um, OK、So for those who are English speakers, I'm gonna、um, probably have to condense what I just answered, but someone had asked if I can answer in English. So I'm going to、um, Translate what I just said. So the question was、um, for a house that's become really old, どういたしまして、um, for a house that's become really old and sitting on a land that might have been purchased by an ancestor or someone、uh, within the family line before you,、uh, she was asking if there's a certain time frame or a certain time that is best to、uh, sell this, this plot of land.、Um, and How would you go about doing it、um, if it's something that has been left behind for you from, let's say, a grandparent or a great grandparent? So, what I had explained was that because it's a land that is tied to your ancestral line, it's really important to do the,、um, take the right steps in order for you to be able to get the,、um, the clearing that is necessary.、Um, and the way that you do that is by Uh, taking a piece of paper and you plot、um, on a straight line the actual individual who purchased that. Ah, okay, you got to this. <laughs>、um, line of the individual who actually purchased that plot of land.、Um, and it might be different from the person who purchased the house, but I would say the land,、um, if it's been in your family for a long time, then、um, the land is, I think, priority. So, You would plot the line、uh, or draw the line with the individual, and the start of the line, you would draw a little dot and you write in the age and the year, and even the month, if you know, of the person who purchased the plot of land. So you start as the, that as the line. And then as you go down the, the drawn line, you plot dots of very important, significant dates. For that individual, that was good for them. So, for example,、um, they got a new job and it was good for them, or you know, a child was born, or、um, you know, some good happenings, and you kind of plot it along the line. If they ended up passing away in the home or while they had the home, that's okay, that, that can be the end of the point. If they moved away at a certain point, then you can actually、um, end the point right there and put the date,、um, the year, and the age, and all that at the end of the point. Once you draw that line, Then, what you want to do is the people who are.、Um, <laughs> I'll explain how I'm answering this question、um, as well if you're interested, Julie. So,、um, Julie, so、uh, what you do is then underneath it, 
every single individual that's living in the house currently, you draw the line and you do the same thing. Um, if it if it's a home that you were born into, then you start at zero. Or if it's a child that was born into the house, you start at zero. If it's someone that married and came into the house, then you start at the age that they came to the house. And you plot the, the, the lines as well, certain significant points in your life. The age, what happened, the year, maybe even the month if you know it. And you kind of fill out this, this line, this lineage, I guess, of, of lines. Then what you want to do is you want to see if there are significant happenings, doesn't have to be the same date, significant happenings that correspond to your life and the actual individual that purchased the house lives. And so you kind of circle. So for example, child was born. So you circle those dots. And you kind of go through the line and, and plot them out and see how things are lining up. And the reason why you do this is that every person living has a particular life cycle and rhythm and it goes up and down and sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes up. And what you're trying to do is figure out how your life rhythm and their life rhythm is syncing. Where it syncs is where you want to be focusing in on. Now, once you figure out that life cycle between your life the family that you live with currently, their life cycle, and the ancestral cycle, then what you want to do is, um, it, it doesn't matter what religion, you don't even have to have a religion, but what you want to do is you want to connect with that ancestor if they've passed away. If they're alive, still great, you could talk to them. Um, but if they've passed on, then what you want to do is you want to take that um, date or specific time frame that's lining up for you and you want to connect with that ancestor at that time so for example let's say um, you're thinking of selling the house um, and you're 53 years old let's just say okay thanks Amelia um, sorry I'm, I'm trying to keep track of time here so if let's say the person had a significant happening at 53 and you're trying to sell the house and you are 53 then those things are linking up and so what you want to do is when you um, are asking your ancestor whether it's through prayer or you can do it through um, you know other means for example when you go to sleep you can talk to your ancestor and say can you please come in my dream I have a question I need to ask you whatever um, and so you want to find that significance um, and pose a question to them. I want to sell the house. Is that okay with you? Now, it could come in the dream, the date, but I was saying it can also happen where you're going on in your everyday life and you happen to fall upon a certain date or, or number, for example, eight um, or 15 or something. And you want to see if it lines up three times the same date. If you're getting different kinds of dates, then it probably means that you're not connecting yet to that particular ancestor, so you wanna keep trying. But what's important is that you wanna line up these dates, the same date. Um, it doesn't have to be the exact month and date. If you want to get that specific, you can. It might take a little bit more time. It could just be month. And you wanna ensure that you lock that in, and once that's clear, then you you would be able to sell the house and sell the land without any problem um, and you'll know that you got the blessing of your ancestor so that's the question hopefully that answers it um, okay so I'm gonna go back in and see if there's any questions that people have asked while we are on um, okay so let's see here mm. okay I'm just kind of scrolling through here okay Thank you for your question, Moon Life. Um, so the question is, I saw your Poshmark. Thank you for looking at it. Thanks for introducing it. I haven't tried, but planning to. Does it work well for you? Are you selling everything you wanted well enough? Um, so I have Poshmark for those who are interested or for people who don't know Poshmark, what it is is you get to um, shop the closet of other people. Uh, they get to post it and you are able to shop their closet and they sell various things like shoes and bags and whatever um, and for me I, I've been using Poshmark a little bit I've been trying it out where I share stuff in my closet that I'm ready to let go that are gently worn um, and so if you're interested in shopping my Poshmark my closet um, you can check it out and I think it's under S Shibuya if I'm not mistaken um, so if you're looking for my account it's under uh, S Shibuya um, but yeah, so I've just started. Um, I only sold one item. I have four items on there right now. Um, so I, I think that it's 
it depends on what you're selling. That's what I've noticed is if it's kind of a item that people are in search of or like a brand, um, it sells really fast. So for example, I just sold a Claire Vivier bag recently um, a few days ago and I listed it and it actually sold I think the next day. So it must be a hot item. Um, other things I have up there, maybe not as brand name noticeable. And so it, it you know, I think that people are um, looking through it and maybe it's not as desirable or as um, quickly moving. Um, so I would say give it a try. It's pretty fun. Um, I wouldn't say you're making gang load of money off of it, but uh, I do like the idea of being able to offer my closet um, for things that you know are very were pieces that are important to me or that I really loved, but I'm ready to let go of and um, for someone to be able to enjoy it. So hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see if there's any other questions. Um, okay, so Julie. I'm gonna answer your question real quick here. <laughs> um, so the reason why um, I'm able to answer these questions is because not that I, Satsuki, human Satsuki knows the answers, because I don't, <laughs> I definitely don't. But um, again, kind of going back to a little bit of the channeling and the energy reading, um, a lot of these things come through um, by uh, messages, I'll see images of it, or it'll come through through certain um, knowings. And so it's not so much something that I'm um, studying per se or something that it's like, oh, you know, what, what is the answer? But it's more of a knowing um, and it hits uh, in a way that um, is very similar to the way that I do energy reading where um, I just allow myself to be kind of the channel or the, um, the vessel. It comes and I'm just kind of saying what's coming through. So um, it's more of, of that versus like an actual knowing that, that I have. So hopefully that answers your question, Julie. Um, and again, for those who are interested um, with energy reading, you can find it on my website. Uh, it talks a little bit more in detail about it, and um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if you might have about it. Uh, okay, oh good, Satsuki S. Okay, so if you're interested in Poshmark and seeing my closet, check out Satsuki S. Okay, uh, Blueberry Hill Beads, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to answer your question. I wonder if you would like to share your spiritual practice before you start to make art. Okay, so the spiritual practice continues to... Um... Oh, okay, good. I'm, I'm just kind of looking at my laptop while I'm, while I'm um, reading it. So the spiritual practice has been the same for me. Um, it, it varies. There's some variations here and there, but for the most part, it's always been some form of meditation, some form of um, reading. So whether it's it's a book that's calling out to me, and again, for those interested, you can find my you know currently reading list. So I usually read a book to help to kind of expand my mind and my my perspective on things. And then um, I'll do some journaling, and that's the time where I'm really digging into the soul, seeing if there's any messages coming through for me or anything that I need to sort out in my mind. I'll I'll journal. So. Those are the three core um, spiritual practices that I, I continue to do. Um, in that, I'll integrate yoga or gardening or some kind of physical um, connecting. But for the most part, those three things seem to be um, key for me to um, enable me to paint. Um, and I think the more and more I dive deeper into my spiritual practice, the more I realize that my art and my practice, spiritual practice, is very integrated. Um, and so I was just having this conversation today where some people might wonder why I talk a lot about spiritual practice and why I do energy reading. It feels very separate for some people. You know, art seems to be like art. And, um, oh, so good to see you, Eve. Thanks for joining. Um, and, and, you know, and spiritual practice is a spiritual practice and it's two separate things. But um, I find that it, it very much is um, the base of why I... I paint and why I um, create art and okay what um, thank you for joining and it's I think it's because the reason why I paint or the reason why I started to have an art practice is very much because it came through to me while I was having my spiritual journey um, meditating and it came to me then so I think that's why it's very much linked and um, and it's an important part of 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 why I um, continue to paint. So I would say 
For those who are interested in um, finding a spiritual practice for yourself that works, um, see if there's a link between certain things that you're doing and if it's charging your practice or if it's, um, how do I say it, uh, kind of being a, um, um, if it's kind of being like the enforcing factor of why you paint and what goes into it and if you feel really enlivened by your spiritual practice or maybe one aspect of it like for example i can do meditation by itself and i can do reading by itself and journaling by itself but i found that the three together is kind of um key for it to really be potent when i go into my studio and paint um so the three tends to be what i try to do every single time in different orders but um so you might have to kind of search and see see what works for you okay thank you so much for your question i hope that answers it um i'm gonna tr I'm, i know i'm a little bit over i try to keep it to 30 minutes but i'm gonna answer a few more questions that have been posted today um before i, I sign off so hold on a second i'm gonna go through your questions here i think there's one i missed earlier so i'm gonna go through and take a look hold on a second please excuse me while i'm scrolling mm -hmm. hopefully you're enjoying this i'm really enjoying our connection here okay so i don't see it here but um ah one september okay thank you for your question i'll be sure to answer it I will definitely I, I'm gonna be post so for those who um, need to go or want to re revisit this post again I'm actually videotaping it on my camera here and I will be putting it up on YouTube as well as my website so hopefully you enjoy um, you'll be able to enjoy it again okay so the question that Kimmy wrote was I usually have vivid dreams oftentimes I see the object or person the following day or a day after which only then speaks or uh, sparks my memory of the dream I can't seem to find meaning behind them. Any thoughts? Okay, great. So, sorry I can't pin the question. I, for some reason, it's not showing up on my feed, so I'm just going to answer it, Kimmy. Um, so, a lot of times, dreams um, might not coincide directly with a current happening. And what that means is that it could be... Mm, okay, I'm going to go somewhere where some people might get a little bit... Uh, woo, like, whoa. So, don't mind me. But... Um, when we are experiencing our current life concurrently there are other lives are happening that are attached to our soul at the same time on different dimensions so for example um we are multi-dimensional beings and meaning that we are currently living our current life but have you ever heard about this this saying where if you were to change your path or your decision a little bit it can completely change the trajectory trajectory of your of your future right but that's always um one version of your life but there's the other version of your life as well where if you have made another choice it's actually going in this different direction so simultaneously there's two things happening at the same time in different dimensions and where it's almost like we're kind of jumping from one to the next so okay so for example if you are having a dream about something and it's not coinciding with your current life it could actually mean, um, oh, thank you for posting it. Okay, I'm gonna pin it real quick. Okay, it, that's the question for those who are joining now. So it could actually mean something that is gonna happen in your future. It could actually mean something that is based on a, something happening and then it triggers it. So meaning that if this happening doesn't happen, you're kind of continuing on this line. And let's say there's nothing that interjects it then that happening will never happen in your current life, but it can happen in this other dimension that's kind of concurrently happening. So um, I would say don't dis disregard your dreams, especially the ones that are very vivid that you remember. Just write them down on a notebook, um, save it for a later time. It could be something that is gonna trigger your memory. A lot of times it might not be one for one, meaning that individual that you see in your dream may not actually mean that you will see them in real life or it may not mean that what you're in um, dreaming um, is going to happen it could be that they're symbolic and a lot of times it is symbols it could be symbolic of what that person um, stands for or very particularly something about that person that's trying to let you know that um hey kimmy this is something that you need to focus on and it could be based on their 
being per se or that certain location there could be something about the location that not necessarily means you have to go there per se but that there's something within that location that you're very much uh, tuning into so try to explore a little bit more um, writing it helps a lot if you're um, a visual person I like to write it um, sometimes if it's reoccurring then try to jot down what the differences are because sometimes it the the answer or the, the clue can be within the difference. So write them down and see if there's even a little bit of difference between how you dreamt about them one day versus another day and, and see what comes up. But if you want to explore more, Kimmy, um, more than happy to just uh, feel free to email me your question. I can go into it during another live session because um, yes, this is stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm very interested as well. So. Thank you for your question. Um, okay, so there are a few more questions. I am gonna answer two more. And then for those who have other questions, please feel free to continue to write them. Um, I'm gonna ask my studio manager, Amelia, and also my PR and my marketing coordinator, Nina, to write them. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them this session, but I'll definitely be able to come on again to live and um, answer your questions. Okay, so the next question is by 1 September. Thank you. Do you have teachings you recommend to someone starting their spiritual journey? Ah, okay. So, um, oh, good, Kimi, I'm so glad. Okay, I'm glad. Thank you so much for asking the question. Um, and a lot of times people are shy to ask questions on live, but I feel like a lot of people have similar questions. And so if you ask it, it's not just for your benefit, but um, other people will be like, oh yeah, yeah. So um, feel free to ask away. This is this time is for, for all of us to share together. And so um, don't feel shy if you have a question. Nothing is silly. There's no silly questions as we all say. So feel free to add them in. Okay, so um, the question about um, teachings. Hmm. So I say the way that you want to go about it is, you might want to go about it, now you have to, um, is that try to see if there's any teachings that call out to you. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a particular religion. Um, a lot of times some people are called to astrology or some people are called to a particular individual, you know, for example, Eckhart Tolle or um, anybody else. But I would say first, just allow yourself to um, breathe, stay open. Um, what I like to do is um, go on Amazon <laughs> and I'm looking through books and I'm not necessarily particularly reading anything per se, but I'm seeing if there's anything that calls out to me and it couldn't even be something as <laughs> as funny as, oh, that book cover, I really love it, you know, and I can look into it. Um, and as you're going through this process of searching, because you're putting your antennas out there and searching for a particular spiritual journey guide, per se, um, something will stick. And I would say try to condense it down to one book in the beginning if you're first starting out. I usually juggle about three to five books at one time, but I would say if you're just starting your spiritual journey, just pick one um, and read it with the intention of trying to soak up whatever information is in there that's calling out to you. For me, my first book for my spiritual journey um, was the uh, biography of the, the Dalai Lama. And it wasn't because I particularly was drawn to Tibetan Buddhism, although um, as some people might know, both of my parents are Buddhist lay monks, but I don't align to any particular religion. Um, but I do align to a lot of the, the nature and the natural aspects of Buddhism or Taoism or Zen and things like that. So that is my, my um, entryway into it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that um, that has to be everybody's way. It's just that I'm, I'm very much in tune and have always been to nature um, and, and uh, plants and the rhythm of the earth and things like that. So it just spoke naturally to me to enter it that way. But I continue to read other things, um, other scriptures from other spiritual teachings. Um, so you might want to find out what calls out to you. And that's another way maybe that um, can inform you of what kind of practice or spiritual journey you want to start with. Is it animals? Maybe you want to look into shamanism. Um, is it moons? Is it um, you know astrological phases? And you might want to look into planetary alignments. Some people are into crystals. Maybe that's your entryway. Um, you know, you could look into so many different ways of entering into your spiritual journey. Um, I would say find out what's interesting to you. Some people, it's cooking. And I think that's a very spiritual thing in itself. 
Um, I'm actually reading this book right now by、um, a pretty well known Japanese chef who talks about cooking as a spiritual journey. And I think it's great because he talks about when you are handling, especially、um, whether it's plant based、um, diet or whether it's animal based,、um, that you are incorporating that life. Energy into your body, and that it's also kind of a ceremonious thing to be able to be at one with the idea of cooking and eating.、Um, so, that can be your spiritual journey. Whatever is interested you know your interest, I would say that's the best way to enter into it and see where it takes you. One step always leads to the next. And so,、um, just stay open, and anything could really be a spiritual journey. I mean, anything, all of it, because we're spiritual beings naturally. So,、um, anything that calls out to you that Connects you, yeah. The important thing is make sure that it connects to your soul、um, and that you feel nourished by it, and that's how you'll know that it is your spiritual journey. And it should be your spiritual practice that's unique to you, not based on what other people tell you that you have to do. So, although I'm giving you advice about it, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, find out what works best for you. Hopefully, that answers your question. Thank you so much. Okay, so my last question for the night that I'll be answering is. Let's see, Julie. <laughs> And she writes, Do you ever feel negative energy? How does that look in your art? Does it look different? Oh, man. Okay, so,、um, and again, before I answer this question, if you have any questions you want answered, Please feel free to write them down. I will be more than happy to answer them on the next live session. And you can always、um, email the studio at hello at satsukishibuya.com. More than happy to answer them. Um, okay, so yes, I do feel negative energy. And what I want to、um, reiterate here is that、uh, in reality, there's no such thing as negative or positive. It's very much a, a,、uh, a human concept, the, this whole idea of duality.、Um, so I try to stay as focused on that as possible, that I'm just picking it up as a different kind of energy and it might feel heavy. It might、um, not really jive with me, like I might not be happy with it,、um, but that it is a necessary energy that I'm feeling.、Um, and it's really good to understand that I don't need to take that in as my own,、um, and that I can、um, really savor it, even if it's good energy or if it's negative energy, that it's both energies that、um, are necessary for my understanding of how. The world works on earth or how it works on earth.、Um, so, when I do feel negative energy, which I do, I'm really sensitive to energy, specifically、um, in places where things feel a little bit heavier when there's a lot of things happening.、Um, for example, when we went to, I, I went to London this past、um, June and there's a lot of things happening there.、Um, and the energy was really heavy.、Um, and I had to ver stay very conscious about what kind of energy I was feeling, making sure that I'm continuing to.、Um, Be aware of how I'm reacting to it and to make sure that I am、um, staying conscious of not absorbing it. But the way that it looks in my art is that、um, it does look different, and sometimes I need to let that out. And it's very therapeutic for me to. I don't usually sell those paintings, I usually、um, either let it out and do something else with it, or I have to transmute the energy because I don't think. I necessarily want to be offering artwork that has negative energy in it, but I do paint it and it looks very chaotic.、Um, and it looks very, for me, it looks really sad.、Um, and uh, it's, it's definitely not、um, the type of work that I feel connected to, but I also know that it's very necessary for me to let that out.、Um, and I think some people、um, who do create art that is through their negative energy and they're channeling it out and they're using it as therapy.、Um, I think that's okay. You know, every person approaches their art, art practice differently, and、um, it, it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just for me, I think my mission of creating art has been to create、um, peace and harmony、um, in the world. And so I think that interjecting, I'm not interjecting, sorry, injecting artwork that has a negative energy to it and knowing it、um, is, is probably not something that、um, I think aligns with my philosophy for work. So I do curate it out. But、um, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, it looks different.、Um, and、uh, I don't show too much of it. Sometimes you might get a glimpse of it on、um, Instagram. I actually had a recent incident where something that I created was very much、um, that energy. And I put it on Instagram stories, and I thought, 
you know, I don't know if I should be sharing it, but I think it's important to be, I feel like I want to be as transparent as possible, especially when it comes to my art practice with people. And so I share it um, on Instagram stories because it's gone in 24 hours. So it's like, poof, you know? Um, so in that sense, I feel like it's safe to share it there, but I don't know if I would, for example, post it on like my main Instagram page where it just sits there. Um, I don't know if I feel comfortable about that. So anyways, long story of a short question. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I know I haven't been able to get through um, everybody's question and I, I really ap appreciate um, everybody who has been on. Um, it's, it's always wonderful to be able to connect with you. I love our time together. Oh, hi Miwa! Thanks for joining! Um, and, you know, I, I really hope that um, we'll be able to connect again soon. Uh, I'm trying to be on Instagram Live uh, once every two weeks, so twice a month. So we usually do the announcement of when we're going to come on, I think the day of or the day before. So um, if you're ever interested in joining in, make sure you look out for that. Um, it's also, I think, in our monthly newsletter. And if you're interested in that, you can check out um, the newsletter sign up, which is on the website. If you go to the corner, there's a little newsletter um, clicky button. So if you click on that, we send out a newsletter once a month. Um, also, we have a workshop coming up in September. Uh, it is a authentic branding workshop. and it's going to be the last workshop I teach for a while because I um, need to um, kind of concentrate my energy to uh, creating art and kind of diving into that practice a little bit more. So I won't be teaching for a while, but um, the Authentic Branding Workshop is um, you know, all about finding your voice and how to connect your inner self with the outer world and all of that will be, will be, it's an all day, you know, event. We're going to have an amazing speaker. We're going to have amazing sponsors with delicious food and drinks. And it's just going to be an amazing day. So um, we do have some tickets left. If you're still interested in signing up for the workshop, definitely check out um, the link. I think it might be down here. Okay, there we go. Um, so if, if you're interested in joining, please come. I would love to meet you and explore more about your soul and what that means in the world, how you can bring that um, more out into the world through whether it's your work or your project. Um, it'd be great. Um, and um, yeah, I, I hope that these one-on-one um, -on -one sessions almost, that's what it feels like to me, that... Um, <laughs> okay good yes um that it, it helps to um ignite something within you you know through these live sessions that you know by hearing questions from other people that you're not alone um and i know for me when i hear your questions it helps me to realize more and more that i think you know we're all in search of answers and we're all in search of trying to figure out what the purpose is of our life and what the meaning is how we can better understand ourselves and each other so um i think these live sessions are just um really indispensable and um i hope that you'll come and join again um because i love to see you あの、もし日本語で、え、今回インスタグラムライブに来てくださった方がいましたら、本当にえ、感謝しています。あの、インスタグラムライブえっと、1ヶ月に2回する予定なので、もしよかったらぜひまた来てください。大体英語なんですけ